foreign and domestic. From the leading man possibly being killed in what's being called a f you car crash move, to delays in Yellowstone Season 5's production because of decisions by the higher-ups, here's how Sons of Anarchy is influencing Kevin Costner's Yellowstone exit. Taylor Sheridan, the talented actor, writer, and producer behind the Yellowstone series, is taking some valuable lessons from his experience on Sons of Anarchy and applying them to the Western, which, by the way, has become a whole universe now with spin-offs like 1883, 1923, and Lawman Bass Reeves. Unfortunately, though, Yellowstone's coming to an end with the upcoming second half of season five. Why? It was going so well, right? Well, rumors of a backstage feud between the lead actor, Kevin Costner, and Sheridan might have had something to do with the show being wrapped up faster than anyone expected. Since people love to pry, the producer was asked if he was going to kill off Costner's character, John Dutton, in a f you car crash move. Here's the thing. Feuding with the man who writes the script can get pretty dangerous, especially since they hold the power to kill off the character you spent so much hard on in the most gruesome way possible. Yellowstone's had its fair share of gory deaths, and fans were wondering if John would meet the same fate. Guess what, though? Taylor said that thought never came to him and instead talked about how his time on Sons of Anarchy had influenced his approach to handling Costner's exit. He said he's not the kind of guy to take his personal issues with him into the writing room. It's nice to see someone who doesn't get caught up in silly little rivalries, which is funny really, because when Taylor himself was acting as a lead in Sons of Anarchy, he was written off the show in the same old car crash trope, so he knows firsthand how weak that writing comes off on screen. He was also kicked off over a feud with the creator, who had planned his his death just in case contract negotiations with Sheridan went south. Talk about history repeating itself. But now, Taylor is spilling the beans on why they couldn't strike a deal and opening up about the unfair wage he was offered on the show, which was way lower than what everyone else was making. Can you guess what happened when his attorney asked for a raise? They basically said, nah, he's not worth more. Can you believe that? They claimed there were 50 other guys like him and that being 11th on the call sheet was his destiny. Ouch! That's when Sheridan Sheridan had had enough, and it wasn't just about the money anymore, it was about the disrespect he faced. After going through this major life change, Taylor realized he was always meant to be a storyteller. How cool is that? But he clearly thought his character dying in a car crash was an insult to him, and more than anything, it was a really weak move by the writers. I couldn't agree more, actually. It's not an uncommon trope, and Taylor's departure from the show wasn't the first time we've seen it. Mega-hit shows like Grey's Anatomy have used the same plot device. Despite things with Sons of Anarchy ending on a sour note, Taylor decided to use the experience to showcase his writing and directing skills. And boy, did he hit it big. He created the massively successful show Yellowstone and a movie called Those Who Wish Me Dead, which starred none other than Angelina Jolie. Talk about a total power move. Goes to show that Yellowstone's in good hands, and though John Dutton won't meet his end in a terrible car crash, but that's not to say the character still couldn't die, since one of the the most likely scenarios for the series finale would be John biting the dust, especially since he's faced his fair share of close calls, dodging bullets, surviving cancer, and a whole lot of other near-death experiences. So it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for him to meet his end in a dramatic yet fitting fashion. Here's the kicker. There might be some sneaky hints along the way that foreshadow his death, like when he told Travis Wheatley that he doesn't have three years to build a legacy. Well, that line might hold more weight than we initially thought. It could be a nudge from the writers suggesting that John's running out of time. Maybe the lead character meets a different fate, like possibly being whisked away to another location after becoming the governor of Montana. Or it could be the complete opposite, with the Dutton family, known for their fierce protectiveness of the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch, finding themselves behind bars. Yeah, you heard it right. Throughout the seasons, we've witnessed the Duttons go to extreme lengths to safeguard their beloved ranch, dancing the edge of the law, bending and twisting it to to fit their needs. But what if all those shady dealings and questionable actions finally catch up to them? John, the patriarch of the Dutton clan, secretly wears the villain's hat. So wouldn't it be fitting if he's the one who ends up in prison? Whatever happens, we can trust that Sheridan's experience and industry know-how will keep the on-screen events separate from any behind-the-scenes drama. He's actually making an effort to put an end to all those feud rumors with Costner. They're actually on good terms, according to him. Turns out that Costner wanted to wrap up his time on the show, simply because 
because he had a passion project in the works. That makes sense, right? He had this grand western epic called Horizon that he was itching to direct, and he talked to Taylor about it, who, being the understanding boss that he is, worked out a schedule that would allow him to pursue his dream project. See, no bad blood here. He's got nothing but admiration for Costner's portrayal of John Dutton, calling his portrayal symbolic and powerful, and saying that any issues they had were easily worked out with a simple phone call. No drama here, folks. He also made it crystal clear that he never told Costner he should stick to acting. Taylor admitted that during season two, there was a moment when Costner was a bit miffed because he felt his character was veering off course. And you know what? Taylor admitted that he might have had a point and season three brought things back on track with Costner even winning a Golden Globe for his performance. As for those pesky scheduling problems that caused friction between him and Costner, he's calling BS on those rumors too. Taylor saying that things got blown out of proportion. Damn, these reporters really have made his life miserable. And you know how it goes when lawyers get involved. The director wants to set the record straight and defend Costner, assuring fans that he was a true actor, loyal to his work, and he didn't complain even when things got tough. So he definitely doesn't deserve all the hate he's getting from fans who don't want Yellowstone to end. Possibly come to and, and you see that though, it's just not a opening for shock for shock's sake. It's a, it's a, it's a storyline that has absolute implications that go beyond just a, 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 a car that's on the... The man has his priorities set, and you can't blame him for being all fired up about his passion project, the Horizon Saga, when he's been working on it since 1988. Good for him to finally make his dream come true. Fans are gonna be happy to know that he's aiming to make four movies, with the first one premiering soon. Hey, can't wait to see what he's cooked up. But what about John Dutton? Will we get closure for his character? Well, there are ongoing discussions to convince Costner to shoot a few scenes to wrap up his arc, but the scripts aren't quite finished yet. Now, it's true that Taylor is kinda disappointed about Costner's exit, saying it may have shortened the ending for his character, but in the end, it won't change what he had in mind for John. That's what I like to hear. Even if Kevin had decided to stick around for the whole Yellowstone shebang, Taylor hinted that Dutton wouldn't have made it to the very end anyways, so it's not a total loss. He also took this chance to put it out there that the annoying production delays for season 5 have nothing to do with him. Kevin's not the one to blame for the schedule conflicts, since he doesn't dictate the schedule or when things start filming or when they air. So Taylor would appreciate it if the reporters put down their pitchforks and stop blaming Kevin for everything. All those decisions are made by higher ups in fancy suits who get to make all the important calls. I know, it's shocking Taylor ain't the big boss we thought he was. So let's not point fingers at him when it comes to production hiccups. He's got enough on his plate keeping us entertained with his creative genius. Anyway, from delays in the Yellowstone season 5 production due to decisions by higher ups Ups, to the leading man possibly being killed in what's being called a fuck you car crash move. This was how Sons of Anarchy is influencing Kevin Costner's Yellowstone exit.